We have two trinomials on the spot, and let me tell you, only one of them is factorable with real numbers. Well, the first one is x to the fourth power is a quartic expression, and this one is just a quadratic. But notice that the 5 and 9 were chosen on purpose. So go ahead and pause the video, try to see which one is factorable or factoring first, and then we'll continue. Done? Good. This one is not factorable in the usual sense. So, how can we do it? Well, of course, one way to do it is we can just keep trying, right? So, for example, we can say, let's go ahead and try. Okay, we need to have x times x to get x squared. Alright, and then for the 9, maybe we can do 3 and 3. But if we have this, after multiplying out, we'll actually end up with x squared plus 6x, right? Because 3x and 3x, and then plus 9. That's not what we want. And of course, we can also try x plus 1, x plus 9. But this right here will give us x squared, and then in the middle will be 9x and another x. So altogether is 10x, and then plus 9. Right? So unfortunately, both of them were sad face. And however, though, we cannot just say, hey, we tried it and it didn't work, so that's why it's not factorable with real numbers. Technically, what we can do is the following. So we shall check the so-called discriminant, meaning the inside of the quadratic formula, the, the, the square root. So just go ahead and compute b squared minus 4ac. Wrong color. Check b squared minus 4ac. This is how we can see if it's a if your quadratic expression is factorable or not, with real numbers or not. Alright, so for this right here, let's just go ahead and compute. The b is 5. So 5 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1. And then the c is 9. 2. And then this right here is 25 minus 36, which is going to be negative 11. And now, this is not positive. That's why this right here cannot be factored in with real numbers. This right here is not perfect square, so there's no way for us to factor it out with like nice combinations. So that's the idea. So this tells us that not factorable. So how do we know if it's factorable though? Again, you will have to take the square root of the result to see if it's a positive perfect square or not. Then in that case, that would be factorable in the usual sense. Alright, so I do have a video on this regard, so if you guys would like, you guys can go ahead and check that out. So what, what what's this though? This is actually factorable. Uh, but how? Well, I will show you. So for this right here, we will have to think about what happened right here. It will actually help us a little bit. You see that this is quartic, right? meaning x to the fourth power. So even though the structure is almost similar, but we cannot just say, hey, the quadratic here is not factorable in the usual sense, so that's also not factorable. In fact, this is doable if you take the square root, but let's not go there, like the square root x, but let's not go there. Anyway, enough talking on that. Here is a little observation that I wanted to tell you. Well, we have x to the fourth power, so let's break it down as x squared times x squared, and then we saw that right here. But I'm just going to write down x squared plus 3 times x squared plus 3, and then let's see what we will end up with. Multiply this out, we will actually end up with x to the fourth power plus 6x squared, and then plus 9. But again, the question right here is the 5. We don't have that 6. However, this is factorable. And the key right here is that this is quadratic, and the middle term is x squared term. So in fact, we can actually just do the following. Check this out. This right here, we can purposely rewrite it as x to the fourth power plus 6x squared, okay, and then plus 9. But of course, they are not equal. Don't worry. I'm just going to minus x squared at the end. So what we are doing is technically, we add the x squared and then minus the x squared. And then we combine this and that together, and you see, we are pretty much adding 0, right, because of the minus x squared. So this and the original expression are still the same. Now, for the first three terms, we can factor it nicely. And what's even better is, it's going to be a perfect square. Even though, you see, we can produce the 10x 
square, but it wouldn't be a perfect square. So that's why we didn't look at this. We look at that. Anyway, here, all these three terms will give us a perfect square, x squared plus 3 squared. Very nice. And then for this, we can say that's minus x squared. And what do we have now? Aha! It's a difference of two squares. So we can actually just go ahead and say this minus that times this plus that. So that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to write it x squared minus, I'm just going to write it down like this, right? I want to have a descending order, so minus this and then plus that, right? Because it's the inside here. And then the second term is x squared plus 3, but then we will have to add the x. And ladies and gentlemen, this is how we can factor this quartic expression. And again, when we are saying factoring, we should technically keep it as polynomial, meaning that the power of the x shall be whole numbers. Because again, if you look back here, we can do the same approach. If you rewrite this as square root of x to the fourth power, and then plus 5 square root of x, square plus 9. But that's not go there. 